Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we are going to be covering off the deck list options that you can take for the arena qualifier play in standard best of one portion of the month. Uh, so, what you see here is the kind of the premier play for MTG Arena. We recently had this, I think a weekend ago or two weeks ago, the Arena Championship, which is a uh, three time a year tournament, $200,000 in prizes. 32 players only make it to this tournament, um, but it is your chance to qualify and potentially make it. And it starts with today uh, or Friday, depending on when you're catching this, maybe Saturday actually, uh, this upcoming weekend. Um, I think it's Saturday actually, and then Friday for the best of three the following weekend. But um, starts with qualifier play in. So this is a best of one format. You're able to play as many times as you want, and you can either do this through a couple different means. You have uh, qualification through a play-in token that you got for finishing top 1200. If you finished top 250 in the previous month, you just bypass it to the qualifier weekend, which is the middle tier, which will be best of three standard. Uh, for the qualifier play-in, you could also enter through play-in points that you get through events. Um, so if you are playing events on the thing, getting your seven wins or four wins in the best of three format, you can play in the qualifier play-in, or you can use your credit card or accumulated reserve of golds and gems to enter as well. If you get through to seven wins, uh, you get to qualify for the qualifier weekend. You'll get your badge and then you get to play in the qualifier weekend event, which is the following weekend. And then that is a two day event where you have to get seven wins. And then the next day you make it to day two, you also have to try to get to seven wins. And then if you do all that, you spike it hard. You are the heart of the cards, the Reed Duke of it all. You get invitation to the Pro Tour and potentially the Arena Championship, and then eventually the World Championship. Then you win the World Championship, you get your likeness on a card, you're moral, immortalized in MTG lore. But we're going to start off with the bottom tier of the Food Pyramid, and we're going to look at standard best of one decks. And we're going to kind of start off with looking at what you could kind of expect in terms of the format, in terms of volume of what's getting played right now on the ladder. And then we'll shift to some of the decks uh, that I think would be best suited for this weekend. We're getting the data from Untapped GG, what you see on the screen. It's a, it's a tool that runs alongside Arena, tracks your win rates, aggregates it with a whole bunch of other users, gives us cool stats. Link for Untapped's in the video description. I'll paste all these deck lists as well so you can get started. So one thing to mind, popularity of a deck does not correlate to win rate of a deck. People play decks that they like. People play decks because they're, it's the only deck they have. So something to keep in mind as we go through all that. Um, so we're starting off mono red and mono white are by and far the two most popular decks. They account for 33% almost of the meta. Both are very linear aggro decks. So best of one is always generally more aggro focused. You should expect that even more in a best of one format. And I do expect that most folks will be bringing some variant of mono red or mono white. Gives you the fastest run with a deck and also gives you the biggest chance for your opponent to stumble. Um, followed by that, we have Golgari Midrange. We have Selesny Enchantments. Four Color Control, which is the Domain Ramp deck. Uh, the Domain decks have kind of fallen off in the last couple of weeks, kind of mid-tier. Uh, then there you have things like Gruel Aggro, Mono Blue Tempo, Mono Red Burn. The Burn deck's just strictly worse than the Mono Red Aggro deck. Just play the Aggro deck. Um, and the Gruel deck, while it can be fun for the latter, I wouldn't necessarily suggest it for something on the event. We're seeing kind of the distribution with uh, mono red just peaking as high as 25% of the meta, uh, and then humans is relatively at its all time high as well. We're seeing the Gruel Aggro deck pick up a little, but overall, nothing too much. So, we're going to jump into it. The, we're looking diamond to mythic for the last week or so. Usually, with this, I want to go to as high as possible. Given that's still relatively early in the month, there's not a huge amount of games being played in mythic standard. Uh, it's only like in the early teens of the month. Uh, so we will look at this 60%, 61% for the mono white uh, aggro deck. And this deck here is using a human synergy. You have things like Copper Coat Vanguard that gives your other humans a buff in power and ward. You have Intrepid Adversary as another lord. Thali is a good tax effect. In the com creature combats, first strike goes a long way, taxing the non creature decks, even in just mono red, taxing like. Their burn spells, stuff of that nature. Spellbook Vendor is kind of the new addition to this deck. Uh, every turn, letting you pay one to give your creatures a sorcerer roll, which gives them a boost in power. 
as well as whenever they attack you scry which gives you some card advantage uh good one drops and hopefully initiate recruitment officer and a, co a single copy of Skrelf. we see the copies of adelin as well as anointed peacekeeper and extraction specialist which has been one of the more recent inclusions we've seen in past weeks that it was previously just the anointed peacekeepers i think extraction specialist is very well suited um it lets you trade early with creatures Get your creatures back. A 3-2 lifelinker can help race against the more aggressive decks as well. If you are anticipating that much mono red, it wouldn't be unreasonable to just swap the peacekeepers completely to extraction specialists. The tax on peacekeeper is not really effective against mono red on average, given that their card cost is very low. So and it's pretty easy for them to kill at three toughness. The other card that you'll see is uh, Virtue of Loyalty. So this kind of fills the early game, gives you another creature at two mana, and then late game is kind of a big overwhelming effect, just making your creatures bigger than anything else while also letting you go offense, defense, letting you attack in while also having creatures on the backside. So um, this is a deck that very powerful, very linear, can run over people. It is something that is a little weak to card advantage. We'll see four Mishras in the uh, mana base as well. We then go to mono red aggro. Now there's not a definitive list, there's usually like edge cases around the numbers in terms of things being added or removed. <coughs> the one thing I will say, sorry about that, is with this list right now, they are a little low on lands. 21 is really pushing it. I would really like to see a 22nd land in this list uh, to be comfortable in that. Um, it looks like they cut a land in order to make space for Urbrask's Forge. Now, Forge is very good if you're anticipating heavier removal decks. In best of three, I play three Forges in the side. Comes in against like any of the black-based removal decks, control decks, stuff like that. Gives you reoccurring value, and it's hard for some of those black-based decks to really answer a artifact. Um, this version is on two Nahiri Wars Crafting. I like having some five damage spells. Uh, the, the bonus with War Crafting while providing card advantage. It's also something you can flashback with Adversary, where Witch Stalker Frenzy does not get flashback by Bloodthirsty. A frenzy is cheaper to cast, but you don't get the recurrent. So it's kind of the trade-off that you're looking for in that angle. Um, given the way the meta is kind of distributed right now, I think you're already pretty like unfavored against the black base decks with this mono red deck. So I would just cut the forge. A single copy of forge isn't going to make or break the matchup. I would play this 22nd line in that place. Uh, some of the lists have gone upwards of three foundries, two Sokuzen, so something to consider there as well. Um, but the core of the deck, very aggressive deck, haste creatures, pump effects, and like Monstrous Rage, a bunch of burn between Lightning Strike, Play with Fire, and you have Godric and Squee that kind of take over the game as your three drops. Then go to Selesnya Enchantments, 58%. Um, so this is kind of a mid deck in the sense it could be a very aggressive deck, it could be a very mid rangey deck. Um, it kind of depends on how you play. The one change I would probably make right now is given the prevalence of aggro decks, I would keep the three Calyx and play the second Catilda. And Catilda is really impactful in those aggressive mirrors, just giving you a big life linker. Um, you can go, really a lot of the matchup against mono red depends on like whether or not you can scale Jukai outside of the damage threshold for red burn. If you are, this could usually run away with the game, but if they could kill this on curve, it's usually pretty um, impactful to like your overall progression. Uh, you have Weaver of Harmony to double up uh, your effects of enchantment. So like double draw, double removal, double pump. Uh, kind of the core of the deck is using Generous Visitor. And it's just casting spells, make a big commie, give it a pump, and give it trample or an evasive creature. Calyx lets you copy your enchantments. Also is another way to put counters on things. You'll notice with the mana base, uh, four, uh, five and five basics, just given that you're on ossification, you need to have the basics in there. <clears throat> For the control players, or if just you're on a budget and you want to try it out, there is mono blue tempo. Uh, so this entire deck is four rares. You could play March of Otherworldly Light. That's something that sees play, maybe in place of witness protection. Uh, see some play. I've also seen some lists recently try out the whale as well, uh, the adventure whale. Um, but the core of this deck is saying no in multiple different ways, languages, rhythmic dance, whatever you want. Um, but counter spells, bounce effects, and then just card draw. 
use things like thirst for discovery as well as flow of knowledge to kind of loot through your effects. Uh, make really big hottie gins, protect it, and then get Talarian Terrors for one mana to kind of beat face. This deck can outrace mono red at times, but if you have a very aggressive start, uh, it can kind of get under you, and then it is a little bit susceptible to Thalia on curve on the play. Then go to Esper Legends. This is the world's winning list. Now this one in best of three. Uh, but in best of one, it is a reasonable choice as well. Um, you have really powerful curves of obviously Skrelv into either Thalia or Denik into Rafine, just letting you kind of churn through your deck. Very easy to kind of find specific answers along the way. Um, Rafine, Shieldred can gain you a whole bunch of life. Uh, Skitter makes a bunch of tokens that then allow you to connive more with Rafine. So a lot of cool interaction there. Go for the throats, make disappears. I'd probably say in best of one, it's probably just best to play the full make uh, go for the throw package as opposed to make disappear. Again, a single copy make disappear versus having access to just more removal against everything we've seen thus far has been fairly creature heavy. I think I would go with that angle there. 27 lions because you have these channel lines as utility spells. Then go to Golgari midrange. Um, so this can have a reasonable matchup against mono red and some of the creature decks. You're bringing obviously a lot of removal between cut down, go for the throats, virtue of persistence. Uh, even Liliana can be a removal spell in the pinch. Life gain with like Graveyard Trespasser and Shieldred. Uh, you have the, the Dread Knight underdog package of just creatures that keep coming back. Uh, Iron Craig feed to help you ramp. And then you have Arcane of the Droves to try to close out the game fairly early. And then just some Planeswalkers and Utility spells. So Ashiok for card advantage. Rick's Command is a nice sweeper. And then Shieldred has more removal. Utility lines as well in the mana base to help you grind the long game. Now, uh, this one's going down to plot, but Soldiers is still super reasonable in this format. 57% um, from plot to mythic, 400 games. Uh, nothing really innovative here. So in best of three, we've seen them move to a more flash-oriented version. We see wedding announcements, uh, the flash uh, soldier at two, more counter spells. The meta in best of three tends to be more mid-range ramp focused, um, whereas in best of one is more aggro. So having the Lord style effects is beneficial here. Um, but you have like Sky Strike Officer that lets you draw cards, Siege Veteran puts counters, and then have your creatures get replaced. So a lot of utility there. Single copy of Myrel, but if Myrel doesn't get answered, it pretty much takes over the game on its own. And then with five soldiers in play, Harbin just is kind of the combo kill. A lot of utility lands between Fortified Beachhead and Mishra's Foundry in the mana base. Uh, and then lastly, this one is another Platinum deck. I think this is kind of a reasonable choice to take to this weekend. And maybe something I would consider, given that we've seen the population of decks being very aggressive. I think a variation of Esper Control can be very well suited. Um, having access, I would even play more copies of Sunset Revelry. I got absolutely demolished on the ladder on Mono Red. Just between Sunset Revelries, creating blockers, gaining life. You have Union of the Third Path, just gaining huge swaths of life. And then access to things like Temporary Lockdown, Sunfall, all kind of mixed in with like your Wandering Emperor, Kaya package on the top end. This version's playing Hallbreaker Horror. You can also play the Whale. I think in best of one, the whale's probably better, um, just given that it's interaction early, where Hallbreaker, even flashing in for seven mana is not great against mono red, and the spells are usually pretty cheap. I would play um, the Adventure Whale. This version's also an invasion of Arcavios, which is kind of a tutor style effect. Um, well, you get to flip it, but you're most of the time just not going to be attacking into it. It's basically a five mana tutor outside the game. In best of one, it is cute because it can find you a specific answer. I think largely you're probably going to be in a similar case where just cutting these two, playing two whales, or even cutting one of these, playing a whale, playing another sunfall, are all reasonable choices in this matchup. Myrax, Wandering Emperor, Kaya are your primary win conditions with the deck. And that's pretty much it. This is where I think you should be. Um, while there are other decks that could be reasonable, I do do these weekly uh, with a little bit more breadth of uh, decks we kind of go down a little bit further given that this is a little bit more of a competitive avenue um there's more like fun of things to try on the ladder but if you're going to be spending either your gems or your playing points you usually want to be on one of the stronger decks in the format and this is where i think where you should be in terms of attacking the format itself uh good luck to everyone competing let me know how you do in the comments and we'll catch you next time thanks for watching